Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Angels in Politics broadcast, and I am your host, the White Collar Goon, the creative and artistic manifestation of Angels in Politics. Somebody might say, what is Angels in Politics? I'm going to say, it's you. <laughs> That's what that is. It's you. It's you. Okay, so... I want to figure, I want to get back to my last uh, conversation. I was talking about hunters. <laughs> I was talking about, uh, you know, like being being a challenger and having that challenging archetype. Um, but it's interesting because there are times whereby I have been the, I have been out of control, you know, <laughs> just to put it simply, I've been out of control or I had I had no idea of how I was perceived by others, right? So sometimes, a lot of the times, it was due to me being drunk. Um, but when you're drunk, your personality, it's not like when people get drunk, they turn into somebody else. No, a lot of the times when people get drunk, they show who they really are. <laughs> and they show parts of themselves that they wouldn't show unless they are either been drinking or very comfortable with you. So... I've always had an aggressive kind of uh, style, an assertive style of behavior. Um, say what you mean. Say what's on your mind. Like <laughs> maybe that's been a good thing. Maybe not. I mean, there. I mean, I would. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. There have been times where women have said, "Well, Gabe, like, tell me how you really feel." Like you know, just because like a lot of people aren't like that, and then whenever they communicate with me, it's like, "Whoa, you are like you don't hold anything back," you know, and. There are individuals who say they love it, you know, but it normally tends to be, it normally tends to be, uh, girls or women who, you know, I guess find that characteristic attractive, maybe because there is, um, they find similarities or there is some type of, uh, comparative, um, I don't want to say advantage to, to having a person like that or, or being that way, but I guess there is a comparative, a comparative advantage of being assertive, aggressive, and direct because people know who you are out of the gate. Whereas, um, there are so many people who aren't this way and they could see my way of being, or my personality as being off putting or too aggressive or, or, or coming off too strong because some people have told me that, um, there are other people who, instead of coming off too strong, they will be complacent and they'll be quiet and they'll be conservative or they'll be passive, even if they don't really agree. But because they are agreeable people, they don't want to ruffle feathers. They don't want to, you know, cause harm or they don't want to hurt your feelings. That's a big one. That's a really big one. They don't want to hurt other people's feelings. So they might go along with something that they truly aren't down with. Truly, they're not fucking with it. Truly, they're not. They're not here for it, but, you know, they'll kind of mosey, mosey on and mosey along with you um, simply because they don't want to hurt your feelings. And I feel like that's the worst thing you could possibly do. Right. So, I mean, I mean, we're, we're different. We're different in that sense. But um, it, it brings me to a time when I was in college and, and it's sad. I was like 18, of course. And, you know, for a lot of young ladies, if you don't understand, like, Men have so much growing to do. I'm I'm nearly 30 and I am on I'm still wet. I'm still extremely wet behind the ears, meaning I'm I'm just I'm not even in my I'm not even in my lane. I'm not even in my lane yet to to become self-actualized. I'm still in training, homegirl. I'm still in developing. I'm still in that developmental stage. I'm still in that cultivating stage of my of of finding out where I need to go in that dominance hierarchy so I can ascend and be the philanthropist, be the radical giver, be that radical transparent infusion of enlightenment so I can spread and conduct that light for constructive and, 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 and helpful and beneficial, you know, ways and practices. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even there yet. I'm still skipping rope and my jump rope just broke yesterday. So I need to get a new one. I'm still doing pushups. I'm still, tr I'm still prepare, preparing my vessel to, to receive that light to receive that, that universal Christ consciousness so I can be who I'm supposed to be, but 
listen, I'm telling you, I'm 30 and I'm still, I'm still not there yet. I'm, I'm still not even close to being there yet. So imagine what a 18 year old guy is to you. He's not only a, he's not a baby. He's, he's a fucking unregulated vessel of pure testosterone, testosterone, energy, confidence, or maybe the lack thereof, but just testosterone raging and you're 18 years old and you're filled with virility and, and, and you're bright eyed and bushy tailed and you're ready to take the world by storm. And when I went to college, man, I was, you know, very compulsive and I, and I, and I indulged in what I liked. And, um, you know, it was, you know, the three dubs and I, and I, and I call it the three dubs, the wine, weed and women, but the weed wasn't there at the time when I was 18, the wine I wasn't drinking or consuming heavily at the time, but it was alcohol. Let's just put that all in the same category. And the women was definitely prominent, you know, so it was alcohol was being introduced at that time. Uh, my personality was already very, very much so directed towards my energy my my the consumption of energy was definitely already directed towards women at a new level more so than any of my peers more so than most of my peers due to my challenging archetype i mean and one end of the spectrum, I can be the leader, charismatic leader, like a Martin Luther King, but on the other side of the spectrum, you can be the leader that's a tyrant, you can be the tyrannical leader like. Fidel Castro, you can be, well, Fidel Castro is a positive thing to some people, but he's not positive to other people. Uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, he's positive to maybe some parts of Russia, but he may not be that positive to people here. Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, Donald Trump, right? You know, so, so it's like, I, with my dominant, domineering, self-confident, self-relying, maverick style of personality archetype, instead of uh, me cultivating uh, or learning about myself, I was really just putting my energy into the three dubs, you know, well, mostly the two dubs. It was the wine and the women. And I remember at 18 years old, we had a massive snow day. We had a mass, it, well, it wasn't a snow day. It was like a snowstorm. And we were like out of school for, we were in school, but we were out of class for like a, a week straight, maybe even longer. So we were like legitimately snowed the fuck in. People were just, you know, the cafeteria was open. You could get food, but like uh, people were just hanging out. And I remember like, instead of buying like, you know, what they call rations or something like that, uh, buying like safety emergency, you know, packages of food, Maybe we did get a little bit of food, but me and my homies, we just put our money in liquor. Like, <laughs> we were buying bottles of vodka and all kind of shit, like champagne. And <laughs> that's what we were doing. Uh, and it was going down. So I remember one time there was a Kappa by the name of Josh who had at a party. He had an event in his uh, dorm. And he was established at this time. He was already in a fraternity. Kappas get the girls, man. So he had, I mean, the ladies were over there. And there were a few guys, too. And I remember, like, and I don't even think it was, like, he promoted it as a big party. It was like, yo, man, people are over there. Like, it's a snow day. I mean, people are just going to random places. And I remember being, like, blasted by the time I got there. Like, I'm in my room. I'm in my dorm. And I'm just drinking vodka out the fucking bottle. Or, you know? going fucking hard like for no reason and i remember by the time i got there i'm fucking blasted like legitimately and i'm just pulling up on girls like grabbing them dancing with them or me dancing on them they probably weren't doing much dance they probably weren't doing much dancing i'm going up to girls and i'm in their face like this like yo like well you know just just over the top over the top and i remember like it was just me. It was it was me just going from girl to girl trying to whatever. You know, just going going bonkers. I was a raging bull. Let's be all the way real. I was what they call a raging bull. I wasn't a raging cat. I wasn't a raging, you know, puppy. I wasn't a raging bunny. Like, no, with my personality and who I was, like, no, like gave you out of control and you you scare people. So 
and I'm not like six foot. I mean, I'm not 200. Well, not now. I'm not 200 pounds. But like, you know, so it's like I'm not a bigger person as far as like size. But as far as like personality is like, OK, Gabe, we can feel your presence in the room. And when you're drunk and you're grabbing on women and you're going aggressively to their face and you're like it was too much. So I remember that boy, Josh, the young man. I'm glad he did that. He pulled me to the side and he was like telling me like, yo, you got to chill, dude. He, he, he didn't yell. He didn't he didn't condemn me. He was like, yo, you got to chill. You got to chill, man. Because I remember, like, looking at the guys, like, and I was kirking out on them. <laughs> I was kirking out on guys in, in, in his apartment, and he had to pull me out of there. But I was kirking because I was like, yo, what the fuck are you guys doing? Y'all just standing on the side. You're just you're just posted up on, on the wall, and you're just, like, not doing anything. There's girls here. I'm the only one dancing. Grab a girl. What you mean? There's girls. There's ass out here. Why you not grabbing ass? Why you not? Like, that was literally what was coming out of my mouth. But not only was it coming out of my mouth, I felt that to be my truth. Like, why are guys sitting here? On the wall, posted up, arms crossed, and you got girls out here playing mute. I mean, the music is playing, drinks are flowing, girls is shaking ass and moving. I'm seeing there like, why, why you not pulling up on them, dude? Why you're not grabbing up on them? And that's the issue, Gabe. That's how we pulled me out. And he was maybe a year or two older than me, but I mean, there was so much maturity. There was a difference in maturity by far, a, a, a stark contrast in maturity by far. And he was like, Gabe. You're right. Guys should be more assertive. Guys should be talking to girls. But you, the way you're going about it is <laughs> is not the way it should be going. Like, that. that's not the way. Yes, man, you have the right mindset. Yes, dude, you are assertive. Yes, you are a leader. Yes, we get that. But this shit is now you're on the end of tyrant. Now you are a drunken tyrant. Now you are... You are in the position of putting yourself and other people at danger. Now you scare people. You're scaring girls. You're scaring people like you're out of control. And that was true. I was fucking out of control. And, you know, it, it takes me to when I was in Thailand and I was going to the clubs by myself. I was going to the bars by myself because the my my colleagues who I was working with, who I, who I was teaching with, they didn't have the same fire or desire that I had they didn't have the same passion of of social socializing and extroversion and they, they weren't my personality archetype they were nice guys they were nice girls but I was out of the Myers-Briggs personality traits there are 16 traits in the Myers-Briggs uh system and and I'm one of 16 but I, I am different in that sense that I can go out by myself. I'm very independent. And I was like, man, Friday night, you guys want to stay in your room. You want to watch TV. And I'm in, I didn't move from New York City to go to Thailand to stay in my fucking room it, for any sense of the word. I, I, didn't, I didn't leave New York City. I didn't move to New York City to have these experiences, to leave, to fly to Bangkok, to become a teacher, to live in this small town, coastal village, to stay in my motherfucking room and watch cable network like no, 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 no. So I remember going out by myself, by my fucking self. Like if nobody else was coming, fine. I'm not, I'm not asking you to join me. I'm going now and I remember, you know, you know, hobnobbing with the, with the, t it was all Thai. There was, it was all Thai people. Like there wasn't a, for it wasn't a foreign club. It was all Thai people. And I'm in there drinking with the people, partying. And I used to get too drunk, man. I remember like the owners of the club, <laughs> the owners of the club one time, you know, like prevented me from coming in one time. I remember walking up. I remember walking up one day. It was like one Saturday. And there was, like, guys in security in the front because they used to pat you down or whatever, wave you. And not really wave you down, but, like, yeah, they would do some type of some type of check before you before you got into the club or the bar. It was it was a pub, actually. But they played live music, and that's where people went. And I remember I was walking up the steps, and the security guy saw me. And I remember he was, like, he spoke in, in Thai. I didn't. I, I couldn't speak Thai that well. Well, I couldn't speak Thai at all. But I remember he looked at me and was like, "Hey!" And started talking and, and tapping people. And the next thing you know, three people came out from the back, and they stood there. Was like, "No, 
I mean, they, they weren't even speaking English. They were just waving their hand. No, 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 no. I'm sitting there like, what? <laughs> what you? They were like, no, can't come in. And I was like, fuck. And then I, th and I thought about it and I was like, what did I do last night? Like I was there the night before, but I also know that I got fucked up and I get like blacked out drunk. So I was like, oh shit, what did I do? You know what I'm saying? What did I do? And I ended up, you know, leaving and, and, and coming back, you know, leaving. And a few days later, I met I met another guy, a guy from like Cameroon or something like that, an African dude. And he was cool and he could speak Thai. Um, Af actually, you know, the, the guys from Africa, man, they're on top, man, because most of them speak multiple languages. When they go to Asia, they pick up the language like it's nothing, man. These guys already are, are speaking, you know, French perfectly in English and some of them are speaking Portuguese and and some of them speak German and of course that's through colonization some of them are speaking French German Spanish you know or their native tongues the, the very various dialects of their native tongues you know what I'm saying so it's like they're speaking languages on a different level so when they got to Thailand they get to China it's like nothing to them but either way the guy from Cameroon ended up translating for me whenever we went back to the club like a week later and i thought i was like bro man i can't even get into the club man like they, they prevented me from coming back i don't know why i was like i think i got too drunk he said man let me ask the guys and he went and talked to one of the people at front up front and he, you know I, I saw them they were he was pointing at me and directing me and i'm standing right there and the guy spoke and he came the the cameroonian guy came back to me and was like no, man, you're not banned from the club. You're not. <laughs> I used to tell people I got banned from Bantuan, and, and, and that was like the joke for my colleagues. They were like, yo, how did you get banned? Like, they, they love you there, Gabe. Like, you were there every weekend. You were, you, were, you were the party. You were the life of the party at Bantuan. Like, you love that pub. And I was like, bro, evidently I loved it too much, man. <laughs> they, 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 I got banned from the club. And the guy was like, no, you didn't get banned. He was like, yo, you were, you were too turned up in there. That's, that's really what it was. They were like, one night, evidently, you were drinking too much. You were going from table to table, talking to people. Uh, some you were you were aggressively pursuing women at the table, getting you know these types of things. He didn't say anything about being physical. I wasn't touching anybody or anything like that. But he was like, "Yo, bro, you're out there like just just going hard." And he was like, "They they couldn't have it. <laughs> they couldn't have it, you know." So it was like, "You can come back. You just gotta you gotta keep it chill." And you know, it was one of those self-effacing moments because you don't know how you are perceived until other people are telling you about yourself and until you see that from other people's lens. But I also, I mean, I, there there are like bits of my memory of, you know, whenever you black out because it's like time travel. It's like parts of the night, you know, you know, appear. And I remember like when the lights come on at the end of the night, you know, it was like 2 a.m. or something like that, 3 a.m. I remember when the hostess, like one of the ladies, and she was a young lady, but she was a, I would say she was young in the sense of like what I liked in young women. Like she was probably like 40 years young, 45 years young, like something like that. So she was, she was older than me, but she was my type. That's what I was looking for. So I remember one of the hostess or one of the ladies who, who served food and drinks was there. And at the end of the night, I made eye contact with her. And like Amy Schumer has a bit about this about like what what is it with guys at the end of the club or at the end of the night is like guys are it's like a zombie it's like the fucking apocalypse it's like the walking dead and it's the truth it is like the fucking apocalypse post apocalyptic dystopian you know end of the world walking dead zombie like world if you are around at the end of the club end of the bar end of the party 3 a.m. because there's just the last bit of lingering guys. Some guys got some, I mean, if you really had a girl, a group of girls with you, you already been out of there. If you're with your group of uh, guy friends and, you know, and some of those guys were out there like pursuing the lady boys and I mean, that was their thing too. But like, if you're, if you're like in, in the States or in uh, most places, if you're the guy or groups of guys who are at the end of the club, you're looking like me half one eye already closed because, I mean, I already got a lazy eye, but when I get drunk, I'm just, you know, one eye closed, halfway bent over, practically drooling, like, you're fucking not even hammered, dude. Like, you're of no use to women, even if you tried, and you are fucking trying. The end of the night, it's like, you're, you're just 
following women blindly, blindly, like almost like you're like a heat seeking missile to find what girl is around. And I am this guy. I was this guy. Like I'm talking like any woman, any woman that's around. And that's why I ended up fucking around. And, and, and I saw this lady who was maybe in her, you know, early mid forties. She was very pretty, but you know, I would say maybe 40, 43 years young. I remember I looked up and I saw that she was there and I must have just popped my eyes up and I went to walk over to her and you should have saw the look on her face. I'm talking like she saw a fucking demon. She <gasps> like like gasped and ran. Like legitimately turned her back and ran. And I remember standing there like, oh shit. Like I, you know, I knew I was going to go. Like I thought I was going to go and, and say some shit to her. But like I had no idea how I was looking. It was like, bro. You're the only black guy in this motherfucking club by far because you're in Thailand and you're not in Bangkok where it's like diverse and multinational in a city of millions of people. Like, no, you're in a small town, industrial, military village, whatever this is, Rayong, and you look the way you look and you're drunk as fuck and you're stumbling around and you saw this woman and the same thing happened to me when I was at stadium in, <laughs> in DC, you know, with, with the, with the, with the, with the strippers. It's like, bro, if you get too drunk and then you have the eye of the fucking tiger and you have the eye of the fucking hawk and you already have an archetype like a fucking shark and you are the disenchanted wolf because you've already written the book, brother, man, you are scary. You are scary. That Like, that is fearful to women. Women, she saw me and she literally almost dropped her fucking whatever, you know, you know, stands that, that women have when they put the drinks on it. Like, she ran. I'm talking like jetted out of that motherfucker. And I, and I stopped and I was like, yo, Gabe, it's time for you to go home. It's time for you to go home. Because that is, that was my... That, that was my challenge. That is That was my struggle. Guys, I'm saying all this to say that, like, in order for you to ascend, in order for you to become self-actualized, in order for you to ascend, and before you, in order for you to become not just apex, not just alpha, now I'm talking like, fuck all that. In order for you to become the archetypal hero, your archetypal superhero, in order for you to manifest your superpowers, you have to figure out what is limiting you, what is inhibiting you, what is what is encumbering you, what what is blocking you, what is your ceiling, because you're supposed to be shooting up to the top, bro. There, there, there's a ladder of, of personal development and success that success is at the top of the ladder, but you can't get to the next rung because you are, you are encumbered. You have a, you have a ceiling and some of those, your ceilings are, 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 you know, of course your fear, your insecurities, your inadequacies, but figure out where your fears are, figure out where your shortcomings are, figure out where your weaknesses are. And my weakness was like, yo, Gabe, you are out of control with, you are out of fucking control, bro. With the women, you, you know, you might be fine throughout the day, but if you're fucking getting sauced up and hammered, you are out of control. And I was losing every fucking time. I was coming back from Bantuan blacked out drunk, hammered drunk, shit face drunk, scratches on my leg, dirt all on my dirt on my clothes, all kind of shit was going down. Why? Because I I wasn't I I had to face my demons. I had to face my inner demons. I had to slay the dragon and I was I was losing, bro. I was fucking losing. If you if you look at the the mythological figures, if you look at the Greek mythology, if you look at any hero story, whether it's Odysseus, whether it's Achilles, whether it's Zeus, whether it's uh some type of dragon slaying story, brother, figure out where your dragons are. Figure out if you're playing Mario, Super Mario, dude. Bowser, Bowser is in you, brother. That's the goon. That is the fucking goon. If you watch Naruto, Orochimaru is here, brother. You have them. You have the darkness. You have pain in your heart. You, I'm talking about pain from Naruto. Like all of those shits. There are there are many bosses. There are many levels that you have to 
figure out what is your issue. Is porn your issue? Because it was mine. Is indulging in sex your issue? Because it was mine. Is getting drunk, blast, like getting fucking hammered, shit face drunk an issue for you? Because it was mine. Somebody is listening and saying, like, you know, and I got friends like this. Women ain't their issue because they ain't chasing them. Their girls aren't their issue. Drinking wine, drinking beer isn't their issue. Smoking weed. I got friends that might tap the weed if it's passed to them, but like that's not their issue. So I got a lot of friends who, whenever I express my shortcomings, they have nothing to do with it because it's like, man, I, I don't got that problem. But trust and believe they do have they do have their issues. They may not express it to me. They may not be open about it, but they, they you have your demons, you have your, your dragons and you must slay them unless you, if you want to become the superhero, if you want to become the archetypal hero, if you want to manifest your powers and align yourself to your mind, body and soul and your five areas of expression, your, your physical body, your spiritual body, your emotional body, your psychological body, your mental body, if you want to emphasize, enhance, cultivate, upgrade all of those all of those expression and become who you are supposed to be and manifest, manifest, manifest your destiny. You must figure out your shortcomings. White collar goon.